Hare Krishna. Jaya Radha Marama Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Janavala Bhagirivaradhari Jaya Gopi Janavala Bhagirivaradhari Yashoda Nandana, but Janna Ranjana Yashoda Nandana, but Janna Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Paravitika Charja Ashtoto that Sri Srimad is divine grace Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Jai Iskam BBT Founder Acharya Srila Prabhupada Jai Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Paravitika Charja Ashtoto that Sri Srimad is divine grace Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thako Jai Ananda Koti Vaishnavindi Jai Nama Charja Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai Srimad Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai Samaveda Bhaktivinda Ki Jai All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to Sri Guru and Gauranga Okay Page 523 Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 
On his 30th day of September 2024 in San Diego, we're reading from Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. We are in chapter 12, entitled Devotional Service, text 15 on the bottom of page 523. Yasman, Yasman. Nodvijate, no Loko, Loko, Lokan, Lokan. Nodvijate, no Chayaha, Harsha Marsha, Bayod Vegair, Mukto, Yah, Sachame, Priyaha. Chad, before I chant the verse, can you lower this a little bit? It's a little too high. It's like we had a big, you know. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. <laughs> All right, turn it down. Uh, Hare Ball, Hare Ball, Hare Ball, Hare Ball. All right, that'll be okay. Yasman no jate loko Lokan no jate chayaha Harsha marsha bayod vegair Mukto yak such a me priyaha Yasman no jate loko Lokan no jate chayaha Harsha Marsha Bayod Vegair Mukto Yak Satame Priyaha Yasman no Jutate Loko Loka no Jutate Chayaha Harsha Marsha Bayod Vegair Mukto Yak Satame Priyaha Yasman no jutate loko Loka no jutate chayaha Harsha marsha bayod begair Mukto yas such a me priyaha Yasman no jutate loko Loka no jutate chayaha Harsha Marsha Bayod Vegair Mukto Yat Sacha Me Priyaha Page 523, Prabhu. Anyone online? Yashman no Jate Loko Yashman no Jate Loko Loka no Jate Chaya Loka no Jate Chayaha Harsha Marsha Bayod Begai Mukto Jasha Chame Priya Mukto Yasa Chame Priya Is that you, Tapas? Tapas? Yes, Prabhu. Where are you? Uh, right now in the Mumbai, waiting for the biometric checkup for my wife. Then day after tomorrow, we'll go to Delhi for the medical checkup. Then we'll go to Singapore, again come back to Mumbai, then we'll come back to US. Okay, uh, I was gonna write you an email, but since I have you on the telephone, <laughs> um, I messed up the recording of yesterday's morning class. Can you send that to me? No problem. Okay, Hare Krishna. All right, word by words. Yes, smart. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Yasmat from whom? Na, never, Udvijate are agitated, Lokaha, people, Lokat, from people, Na, never, Udvijate is disturbed, Cha, also, Yaha, anyone who, Harsha, from happiness, Amarsha, distress, Bhaya, fear, Udvegai, and anxiety, Muktaha, freed, Yaha, who, Saha, anyone, Cha, also, may, to me, Priyaha, very dear. 
Translation, he by whom no one is put into difficulty and who is not disturbed by anyone, who is equipoised in happiness and distress, fear and anxiety, is very dear to me. Purport. A few of a devotee's qualifications are further being described. No one is put into difficulty, anxiety, fearfulness, or dissatisfaction by such a devotee. Such a devotee is kind to everyone. He does not act in such a way as to put others into anxiety. Oh, I'm sorry. Since a devotee is kind to everyone, he does not act in such a way as to put others into anxiety. At the same time, if others try to put a devotee into anxiety, he is not disturbed. It is by the grace of the Lord that he is so practiced that he is not disturbed by any outward disturbance. Actually, because a devotee is always engrossed in Krishna consciousness and engaged in devotional service, such material circumstances cannot move him. Generally, a materialistic person becomes very happy when there is something for his sense gratification and his body. But when he sees that others uh, have, have something for their sense gratification and he, and he hasn't, he is sorry and envious. <coughs> when he is expecting some retaliation from an enemy, he is in a state of fear. And when he cannot successfully execute something, he becomes dejected. A devotee who is always transcendental a devotee who, who is always transcendental to all these disturbances is very dear to Krishna. Om Ajnana Timarandrasya Gyanandana Shalakaya Chakshur Un Militam Mena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. I was born in the darkest of ignorance, but my spiritual master Srila Prabhupada opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer Muhammad obeisances unto him and to all members of Sri Parampara. Hare Krishna. Bhairabha Noah. So the, uh, Krishna is uh, giving a list of qualities that a devotee manifests. And he's saying here that um, such a devotee, each, each, each verse ends with the phrase, uh, Same Priya is very dear to me. So the idea is that these are uh, examples of advancement of, of those who are on the transcendental platform very firmly. And they manifest these, these qualities. The first one is Adveshta. He's not envious of anyone. That's in, in text 13 to 14. Uh, not only not envious, but friendly and merciful to all. It has no sense of uh, proprietorship, false ego, as uh, equal poise and happiness in distress, like that. And these are natural qualities that develop in the devotee. And so Krishna, after each one, is Yomad Bhakta Same Priya. These are uh, qualities that are already there in the advanced devotee. And uh, the, that's the, the whole chapter is like that, and we'll continue for a few more verses. And basically that's the, the, uh, the teaching here, is that Remember the first question, Hare Krishna, welcome. <laughs> ladies, ladies side here. Yeah, there's plenty of room. If you want, you can sit on the, the bench, you know, you can just take the book up. Depending on how. Okay, we are on page um, uh, 523 and 524. We just read, read about the qualities of a devotee. So we'll be continue with text 16. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's the one they distribute in India. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. All right, text 16. Uh, you have, you earned text 16, page 524. Anapeksha Shuchir Daksha. Udasi no gata vitaha. Sarvaram paparityagi. Yomad bhakta same priyaha. My devotee, who is not dependent on the ordinary course of activities, who is pure, expert, without cares, free from all pains, and not striving for some result, is very dear to me. Purport. Money may be offered to the devotee, but he should not struggle to acquire it. If automatically, by the grace of the Supreme, money comes to him, he is not agitated. 
Naturally, a devotee takes a bath at least twice in a day and rises early in the morning for devotional service. Thus, he is naturally clean both inwardly and outwardly. A devotee is always expert because he fully knows the essence of all activities of life and he is convinced of the authoritative scriptures. A devotee never takes the part of a particular party, therefore he is carefree. He is never pained because he is free from all designations. He knows that his body is a designation, so if there are some bodily pains, he is free. The pure devotee does not endeavor for anything which is against the principles of devotional service. For example, constructing a big building requires great energy, and a devotee does not take to such business if it, is not benefit, if, if, if it does not benefit him by advancing his devotional service. He, can, he may construct a temple for the Lord, and for that he may take all kinds of anxiety, but he does not construct a big house for his personal relations. So these are some of the qualities that are manifest in pure devotees. Uh, Anapeksha, he's, he's neutral. He doesn't get uh, entangled in, in a lot of material um, uh, enterprises or motivations and things like that. The, 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 the idea, and Krishna has described this in previous, in, in, uh, earlier in the chapter, is that uh, he's simply fixed on his mission in life which is to attain Krishna, go back home, back to Godhead. And the, uh, the, the, he embraces the six qualities of uh, surrender. Anukulyasa sankalpa, pratikulyasa bhajanam, rakshishyatiti vishvaso, goptvedvevadanantata, atmanikshepikarpane shadbada shadanagati. This is called sharanagati, means uh, having gone to the state of surrender. So the first one is, Anukulisa Sankalpa, he accepts those things which are favorable to, to devotional service. Prabhupada's listing a couple of them here. Uh, physical cleanliness, getting up early in the morning to use the valuable early morning hours for bhajan, for chanting Hare Krishna, coming to the temple if possible. Uh, and, and there's so many others. And giving up, practically yasa bhajanam, those things which are against devotional service. Now devotees, as we all know, I assume, they have these four regular principles which if you want to live in the temple, then that's, you, have to do, you have to observe them. And uh, the first one is uh, no meat-eating, no intoxication, no gambling, and no illicit sex. So uh, Prabhupada, always, he often tells this story that when uh, some of his god-brothers were sent to England by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, he was very eager to spread Krishna consciousness outside of India. He was very successful in India. He started 64 mats, all parts of the country, printed many thousands and thousands of books, had many disciples. But he knew that Lord Chaitanya's mission and his prediction was that his, his movement, his name would be chanted in, throughout the world. So at that time, of course, India was under the British rule. So the natural place to go would be first to England. So he I, I made a lot of planning. There was actually a book, a special book that was written I, uh, about Lord Chaitanya, I forget the name, I think it was just called Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, by one of his disciples who was an English professor, it was very nicely done, doc, doc, Dr. Sanyal, just so that they could have this book print and they could distribute it in English in, uh, in, in London. And so with great fanfare and, and with great hopes, he sent, I, I don't know how many there were, at least half a dozen, maybe a dozen devotees were on this mission. And they... Uh, they, they immediately went for the upper crust, you know, the lords and so forth. You know, they weren't preaching in the street. Srila Prabhupada, he didn't have, he was alone, had no money. So he lived basically as he could. And Krishna moved him here, moved him there. And he went to the, the, the best place in America, probably, for preaching, which was the Lower East Side of New York. I, used, I lived there in 1968. He was there in 66. I missed, but I would see the devotees on the street, you know, when I lived there. Just two blocks from Tompkins Square Park. Krishna's arrangement. But, uh, but this was the 60s, when there was all of this exploration and consciousness, and the, you know, the devotees would go, some people would go to India and try to find a guru, and like that. So it was very fertile ground, and it just so happened that Allen Ginsberg was living there at the time. He was a world-famous poet. He had become very famous in what they called the Beat Generation, uh, which trans, transmogrified into the hippies. So... Uh, and, and Alan Goodman had been to India, and believe it or not, he came back and he was chanting Hare Krishna. 
I don't think he knew much about what the mantra was, but he liked it, so he was chanting it, <laughs> popularized it. Then when Prabhupada came and he, he learned more about it, he was very attracted to you know learn from Prabhupada and help Prabhupada. And he did, just by associating. You know, there was an article in the New York Times about the devotees. It wouldn't have happened if it was Allen Ginsberg wasn't involved. So this is going on. So anyway, Prabhupada would tell the story about uh, some of his godbrothers who went to London, and they met uh, one of the one of the uh, the lords there. You know, there's someone in the high echelons, and uh, I forget his name now. But he was familiar with India because they had ruling India. So he said, "Can you make me a Brahmin?" And so uh, he said, "Well, why not?" All you have to do is follow these four principles. And he laid them out. Said, no, no illicit sex, no gambling, no meeting, no intoxication. And he said, impossible. <laughs> That's our life. That's my life, you know. <laughs> so it's not, it's not easy to do that. But if you're serious uh, about advancing and you, you want to do that, then you, you embrace it, you do it. Now, and, and the process of chanting Hare Krishna and engaging in devotional service, which anyone can do, anyone can chant Hare Krishna. You, might, you may be breaking all four regular principles, you can still chant. But if you're serious, then that, that will, Krishna will give you the strength to be able to follow those principles. That's the idea. It's not impossible. So anyway, uh, that's part of surrender. Then, then you go, Rakshishatiti Vishwaso, to be fully convinced of Krishna's protection. Now this is not so easy because sometimes you're in great danger and you want to take as many facilities as possible, you know, to get out of it. But uh, the great example is Prahlad Maharaj. In the morning, we're reading still from the, the adventures of Prahlad Maharaj. Those are familiar. And he was born in, in uh, the demon's family. He's a daicha. He's a descendant of Diti. But he himself was not a demon. He was trained up as a devotee while still in the womb. You know the story? Yeah, yeah. So, but he's born, he's been born, and there's his father, who's this huge demon, he's taking over the whole universe, powerful, you know, his very name, Hiranyakashipu, you know, he's after gold and soft bedding, you know. So, uh, and, and Prahlad, this tender little boy, he was never afraid of his father. You know, his father was that conquered the universe. And when his father asked him, that, it's interesting because we just had this uh, verse that talked about Udvijate, right? Yasman no Udvijate local, no Udvijate. You see that? Text 15. Udvijate is, I mean, the agitated or disturbed. You know what you see? So when Prahlad Maharaj, they, they, they probably always call him Maharaj, even when he's a little boy, okay, we'll call him Prahlad. Sri Prahlad, uh, he, he was sent to school to learn how to be a good demon, you see? Now, but he was already a devotee, so he didn't take any of the lessons. Anyway, but his father didn't know that because he was instructed in the womb by Narada Muni. So when uh, Pallad comes back, his father takes him on his lap, smells his head, you know, maybe a tear comes down. I mean, he loved, you know, Pallad. What is, what's the best thing you learned today, Pallad? <laughs> so from the very beginning, he's preaching to his father fearlessly. He knows, you know, his father's brother, Hiranyaksha, was killed by Varaha. So he's a sworn enemy of Lord Hari. But so he, what, did, what did you learn? So he, so he uses this word ujvite. That reminded me of that word vijite. Tat sadhu monye. Now the word sadhu can mean, of course, sadhu, a, a, a saint. But it can also mean very good. Something like uh, this, this phrase. Someone does something very nicely on the stage or something. Oh, sadhu, sadhu. Have you ever heard that? You know, and most devotees think, oh, you're calling him a sadhu. You know, but then we learn that no, it just means bravo. Bravo, bravo, right? That's perfect translation. Anyway, so this, here it means the best thing, the best thing I learned. Tat sadhu manye asudabharya dehi nam sada samud vigna diyam asad grahat hit patma patam griyamanda kupam vanam gato yad hadamashri the word hari is there, hadamashri yeta. He's recommending his father take shot of hari, which is the last thing he wanted to hear or expected to hear from his son. And he looked at Shanda and Amarka, the teachers, what have you been teaching him? He said, we didn't, we didn't teach him that. We don't know how, where he got it. You know? <laughs> so anyway, what he's saying there, and, and he continues to do this. Every time his father asks him, what did you learn? You know, it's Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smaranam. 
Finally, his father just, he's a, he's a poison tree in the dynasty, go kill him, you know, and they couldn't kill him. He was protected, Rukshishiti Divishra. So, Balad was a little boy, what could he do to defend, you know, they're trying to. So, he just prayed to Krishna. He's the exemplar for meditating on Krishna, for being absorbed in Krishna. And so he was protected. They threw him off a mountain, he was protected. They crushed under the elephant, he was protected, all kinds of things. So, what the verse means is, is very important. Uh, a, 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 he didn't call him father, he called him the best of demons, a sort of Arya. <laughs> Only when he was killed did he finally refer to him as his father. Tatsaru Manne, the best thing I've learned, in my opinion, oh, best of the demons. Best for whom? Dehinam, for the embodied souls. Who are Sadasam Udvigna Dhyan? This Udvigna is the same root of this Udvijati. Udvijati. Sadasam Udvigna Dhyan, whose intelligence, whose consciousness is always disturbed. Why? A sadgrahat. It's very, very telling. Because they're holding on for dear life to that which is temporary. We've taken shelter of the body, of our, our bank accounts, health insurance, uh, a million different things. But all of them are temporary, beginning with the body. So we're, we're, we've taken shelter of a, of a leaky boat. You know, we're right near the ocean here. But you go out, you know, suddenly it's leaking. Suddenly, ah, what do I do? Right? So you, so you, okay, luckily we have these life preservers. So you jump in a life preserver, you're floating in the ocean, someone will come again. But the life preserver is also leaking. You know, this is a sud or hot. You see? So therefore, we're o- always in anxiety in this world because however nice the situation may be, it can change. The hurricane can come here, the earthquake can come. I remember there was once an earthquake. This was early, soon after I came here, maybe it was 92 or something. This is over 30 years ago. So they, you know, the, 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 the place was changed from what it was. They used to have the store upstairs, the whole store, you know. And they had a lot of devotees lived nearby because the rents were more reasonable. Then the rents went way up and everybody moved away. But me, I have the rent, BBT pays the rent, so I can say. So anyway, I was chanting upstairs and suddenly, what the heck? And I ran down the stairs, I looked and the, and the uh, chandeliers were, you know. So I, sh- I should have run to the deities, to see it, but I didn't. I ran outside. And uh, still, right on the sidewalk, it's like you're on a, a surfboard, you know. Okay, you know. But luckily, it quieted down. It, was, it didn't go beyond that. But, uh, but, that, but that's, that's the nature of this world. At any time, at any moment, something like that can happen. You know, some disease or whatever. So, sadasamud vigna diem, the consciousness is always in trouble. So what's the solution in the second half of the verse? One has to hit vatma patam griyamandakupam. So griyamandakupam means a, a blind well, which is, is materialistic family life. No Krishna consciousness, just materialistic. That's, that's a blind well, which is sure to bring you back again for you know, suffering. So hit vatma patam. One has to give up the, the, this, this, this consciousness, this uh, materialistic life, uh, which, which destroys self-realization. Hitva atma patam, griyam kupam. And then what to do? Vanam gato, go to the forest. And it's understood the forest is Vrindavan. In the commentaries. Vadam uh, gato yad haram And there take shelter of Hari Krishna. You see, he's preaching that to his father, which is, you know. So that's, that's the solution. And that uh, is re- reflected here in... Uh, that yes, man, no, loka, no, in text 15, which we, the first verse we read tonight. He doesn't disturb anybody, he's not a, a source of anxiety for one, and he himself is not disturbed by anyone. Always equal poise in happiness and distress. This is the, a sign of, a, of an advanced devotee, and Srila Prabhupada showed that. You know, he gave an illustration of that when uh, he came to America and it was inconceivable. I mean, can you imagine going to a strange country? He had like seven dollars. He had one contact that he could go to in Pennsylvania, and they had arranged to pick him up at the at the port and put him on the bus and took him all the way to Western Pennsylvania to a city that has now become world famous. You know what that city is? Butler, Pennsylvania. Does it ring a bell? <laughs> I was shocked when they, they anyway. Yeah. So he was in Butler, Pennsylvania for a while, but he didn't want to stay there. It was, you know, he wanted to go back to. No, he made his way back to New York. And he was able to live with Dr. Mishra, another yoga teacher, for a while. Uh, but, he, but Dr. Mishra didn't want him to preach to his students because, you know, he was afraid that and he would have. He would have taken them all away. So anyway, he was not really happy there. 
And eventually he came downtown. There's a long story, wonderful history. And starting, you know, living in the Bowery, the Bowery. Now we have uh, so many homeless people. The famous, you know, you go to L.A., there's thousands, tens of thousands. Here we have a whole encampment. Here in Pacific Beach, you see occasionally, you know. Uh, but just imagine, in, in those days, the Bowery, because I lived in the New York area, if you, if you w were uh, on, you know, became homeless in uh, Oshkosh, you know, or somewhere in Iowa, you made your way to the Bowery. In other words, it was the place where all the vast majority of the people in America who were out, out you know, they're out of luck, they're drinking, whatever, they, they didn't have anything, to, they went to the Bowery. So this is where Prabhupada was able to get an apartment. To, to get to, into his apartment so he could, he could walk up the stairs, the, the, the drunks who were passed out in front of the doorway, they had to move. So Prabhupada, I don't know if he just called them out, and they woke up and said, oh, and they saw he was a saintly man, so they said, okay, and they just rolled over so he could get in. That's the situation he was in. <laughs> Imagine the, tol the tolerance, you know. But he relied on two things. The holy name, the power of the holy name. He would, he would you know, do kirtans. And there were all kinds of people living in that area because it was cheap. Mukunda, it was called Michael Grant at that time. He was very famous. He was one of the earliest devotees. He was a professional musician. And he got what they call an uh, artist-in-residence loft. He was living in, and that's what Prabhu was able to live in along with someone else. So he can have kirtans there because there was room, you know. So he had the kirtans, and he would cook, and uh, in this way the movement started. And and the Prabhupada, he displayed all of these uh, these qualities here. These are things we should strive for. All right, I think we're on seventeen now. Okay, page five twenty-five. Yo narishiti nadreshti. Na shochati na kangshati. Shubhashava padityagi. Bhakti man yasame priyaha. One who neither rejoices nor grieves, who neither laments nor desires, and who renounces both inauspicious and uh, auspicious and inauspicious things, uh, such a devotee is very dear to me. Hare Krishna. Would you like to get, see a book? Just take a book. If you want to sit on the chair, it's fine. Or the bench, whichever is, you feel more comfortable. Okay, yeah. We're on page 525. Purport. A pure devotee is neither happy nor distressed over material gain and loss. Nor is he very much anxious to get a son or disciple. Nor is he distressed by not getting them. If he loses anything which is very dear to him, he does not lament. Similarly, if he does not get what he desires, he is not distressed. He is transcendental in the face of all kinds of auspicious, inauspicious, and sinful activities. He is prepared to accept all kinds of risks for the satisfaction of the Supreme Lord. Nothing is an impediment in the discharge of his devotional service. Such a devotee is very dear to Krishna. So you can imagine trying to get these, these qualities Without Krishna consciousness, it's not possible. So what is it about Krishna consciousness which is enables you to be, you know, never rejoice or never grieve? Materially, you can rejoice, you know, if you're able to build a temple, whatever. But, but you're not lamenting over anything material or desiring anything material. So the, the, the thing that makes this possible is that at every moment, you're relishing your relationship with Krishna, with God, which is completely fulfilling. You're trying your best to serve and glorify him, and you know that the result is up to Krishna. And oftentimes, as Prabhupada experienced, uh, you know, for, for a whole year practically, he struggled, and the, the, he was able to record. It's very interesting. He had, someone gave him, a, when he was living uptown in Manhattan, a reel-to-reel -reel recorder. I don't know if you've ever seen those. They're not really used much anymore. <laughs> I had one one time. They're very bulky, you know. Uh, but he had one, and he used it to record the whole introduction to this book, the indu introduction to the Bhagavad Gita. And if you read that, it's, it's, it's wonderful. It, it, it outlines the whole process of devotional service and things. You know. So then when he was out, someone came in and stole the tape recorder. But they didn't steal the tape, the most valuable thing, <laughs> with that, with that uh, introduction on it. And finally, when he came downtown, they were able to transcribe it, and it became the introduction. In fact, it's printed as a separate book. It's, you can get it. So, uh, you know, Krishna was, was guiding him all, all the time what to do. Even when he came to L.A. 
uh, after the movement was, was established after a few years. And l l the, turn, the west coast of, of, uh, of California became very fertile. It was San Francisco and then the Los Angeles Temple. And he was able to get a, a church there. I don't know if you've ever been to that Watseka Avenue Temple, but it's a whole, the, the, the devotees have houses and there was a church there, that's the main temple. And it's a very good facility. And Prabhupada stayed there for eight months in 1970. He didn't plan to leave. He was, uh, they were making devotees every day. I mean, this, is this, this is the era of Vishnu Jan Swami. I don't know if you've heard of him, but he was legendary. He was, he was a very good musician, very sincere devotee, and a wonderful drummer. He would go out all day with the devotees on Harinam, you know, and come back, and he would lead Kirtan. And, and uh, he was there. Tamal Krishnamaraj was there. And uh, Dhanavir uh, wasn't a Swami at the time, but he was dealing with the bhaktas. And he, they were making devotees every day. And what would probably, they wouldn't just stay there. They would get trained up and probably would send them out. That's why there's so many temples in America. Probably said, you go start in Santa Fe. You know, there was a temple there for a while. That one didn't last, but other ones did. Houston and, and, and Dallas and all over the place. And they start, many of them were started by devotees who were trained there in Los Angeles. So Prabhupada said, this is wonderful. I have a, one, a very competent crew managing. And uh, uh, once he had all the devotees come to L.A., who, who were leaders in the different temples, I don't know, at the same time, to learn, uh, you know, what it means to be a temple president and, this, and, the, and the regulations and the standards of, you know, uh, the morning program and so many things. But at a certain point, as Prabhupada like, likes to quote, you can, you can look up, in the books, if you have the Veda base, uh, uh, familiarity breeds contempt. He knew that phrase, you know, and he found that devotees were coming lax. He came in one day, and you know, the, if you see, uh, and the curtains open, you hope, hopefully, you can stay for the RT. Uh, there's the parampara there, so the picture of his of his spiritual master was upside down. There was one time when the the charanamrita, you know, which is made from water that's bathed the deities, you know, very, very important. Uh, they put salt in it instead of sugar. And, he said, you know, so he, anyway, it's a whole thing. And he, he said, oh, I have to leave here now. But he really didn't want to leave. But then uh, Rukmini Dwarkadish said, communicated with him, yes, you should go to India, you know, and, and preach there. Because he left India. Nothing was happening in India. You know, he, he tried there for years and years. He couldn't do anything. So then... Uh, he finally left, you know, after eight months. And uh, he went to Japan, then he went to India, then he, then, and then he called, rep, you know, he wanted to have a Sankirtan party there. So he had representatives from, different, from the temples uh, come to India. And he had a whole crew, and they went on tour. They did so many pandals, thousands of people came. The whole thing exploded in India, you know. <laughs> so this is Prabhupada. And he meets all of these qualities. If you, if, you read the, if you read the verse, you can see that he you know, embodied them. And there's, the, the reason why there's this list here is that, oh, shit, we, you know, if we're serious about devotional service, uh, we should try to manifest these qualities, pray to Krishna that we can be equal poised and happiness and distress and so many different things. And we can also recognize advanced devotees because they manifest these qualities. They may you know, always striving to achieve something and maybe it, it, it doesn't happen right away, but then they're not discouraged and they persist and then they're able to start a temple or something, you know. So that's, that's the idea. If he doesn't rejoice or grieve, is steady and determined to continue serving Krishna. Nothing is an impediment in the discharge of his devotional service. Okay, 1819, we're almost through because this chapter is only 20 verses long. We may finish it. Samakshatracha mitrecha Jatamana Pamanayo Shitosha Sukudukeshu Samak Sanga Bibarjitaha Tulian Indas to Tir Mauni Santushto Yena Kainachit Aniketas Dirimatir Bhaktiman Me Priyonadaha one who is equal to friends and enemies, who is equipoised in honor and dishonor, heat and cold, happiness and distress, fame and infamy, who is always free from contaminating association, always silent and satisfied with anything, who doesn't care for any residence, who is fixed in knowledge, and who is engaged in devotional service. Such a person is very dear to me. Purport. 
A devotee is always free from all bad association. Sometimes one is praised and sometimes one is defamed. That is the nature of human society. But a devotee is always transcendental to artificial fame and infamy, distress or happiness. He is very patient. He does not speak of anything but the topics about Krishna. Therefore he is called silent. Silent does not mean that one should not speak. Silent means that one should not speak nonsense. One should speak only of essentials. And the most essential speech for the devotee is to speak for the sake of the Supreme Lord. A devotee is happy in all conditions. Sometimes he may get very palatable foodstuffs, sometimes not, but he is satisfied. Nor does he care for any residential facility. He may sometimes live underneath a tree, and he may sometimes live in a very palatial building. He is attracted to, ni to neither. He is called fixed because he is fixed in his determination and knowledge. He may find some rep we may find some repetition, repetition in the descriptions of the qualifications of a devotee, but this is just to emphasize the fact that a devotee must acquire all these qualifications. Without good qualifications, one cannot be a pure devotee. Harav bhaktasukuto mahad gunaha. One who is not a devotee has no good qualification. One who wants to be recognized as a devotee should develop the good qualifications. Of course, he does not extraneously endeavor to acquire these qualifications, but engagement in Krishna consciousness and devotional service automatically helps him develop them. So, free from all bad association. Uh, <laughs> I come back to this. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, in the uh, 25th chapter of the third canto, you'll find the teachings of Kapila Dev to his mother, Devahuti. Very nice, very wonderful section. And right near the beginning of those instructions, there are eight verses describing the importance of associating with sadhus, sadhu sangha. It's become an English word, satsanga, satsang, right? I'm sure it's in the dictionary. So, uh, and these eight verses, they're, they're, they're wonderful, and I... I uh, Name them. I hope I don't get in trouble for that. For called the Sadhu Sangashtaka. <laughs> so let's let's hear a little bit from the Sadhu Sangashtaka because that's that's the uh, one of the one of the qualities. He's not uh, he doesn't associate with non devotees. He's always careful of his association. Okay. So the first thing he says, Prasanga madaram pasham atmana kavayo vidus ahesha sadhu shukato moksha dvaram apavratam. I put this one in a little poem. I should do them all. It said, Mundane affection keeps us tied to birth and death infernal, but love for sadhus opens wide the doors to life eternal. So, Hare Krishna, welcome again. Have a seat. <laughs> you can get a book. Um, page 526. So, what is, uh, so the word prasanga is there. Now, prasanga Sangha means association, pra, pra is an intensifier. So what does it mean? In this case, Sangha can mean association or attachment. And in this case, it means attachment. So Pra means a strong attachment uh, uh, to the things of this world are like ropes that bind us here, life after life. You see? So, he's, so the mundane attachment keeps us tied to birth and death infernal. It, it keeps us coming back in here because the state of your mind, when we die, the gross body dies, but the subtle body persists. So the mind, intelligence, and ego, that carries the soul to the next body. This is very nicely described in the 15th chapter begin, near the beginning. So you can see the science. We, if we have some intelligence, we should try to develop that consciousness which will take us back to Godhead. That's Krishna consciousness. If you're always thinking of Krishna, then you're always thinking of Krishna and his activities, his form, and everything. And you want to be reinstated in your return, original relationship with Krishna. So here he's saying that uh, in order to develop that uh, Krishna consciousness, we need to associate with sadhus. And the next question is, well, who's a sadhu? So then he gives three, three verses describing what the sadhu is. He starts out with this famous verse, Tatikshava Karunika, Suridak Sarvadehina, Majata Shatravakshanta, Sarvak Sarubhushana. The first quality, very tolerant. He's, Krishna is talking about these here also. Tolerant and merciful. Now that's this is this is the 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 uh, qualities, uh, the most important qualities of someone who's trying to spread God consciousness, because there's so much opposition. Prabhupada always gives the famous example of Jesus Christ, you know. 
He, he was crucified for that. So you have to be tolerant, but you have to be merciful. That's what's moving you to help. You feel compassionate for these people uh, who have no uh, uh, spiritual assets. Oh, you, you got the one that's broken. Use, use, use the other. Okay. Yeah, they're all, we should really throw that one out. You can see part of it is broken off. There you go. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deep six that one. So, Tatikshiva Karunika, uh, tolerant and merciful. Merciful to who? Suridak Savade, you're the best friend of every living entity, not just human beings. That means you don't eat meat, you know, and, and if you see a, 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 an ant, you try to avoid stepping on them. You know, you're not, you don't want to hurt any living entity. So, Ajata Shatava, because of that, you have no enmity toward anyone. And Shanta, you're very peaceful. You see? Very peaceful. These are the qualities of a sadhu. Now, you notice it doesn't mention uh, bhakti in there. There's no mention of Krishna consciousness. That's the next verse, how you get these qualities. <laughs> so K- Kapila Dev is an incarnation of Krishna. And so he's speaking in that capacity. And he says, Maya nannena bhavena bhaktim kuvanti yed vidham matkate chakta karmanas chakta swajana bhandava. So they say, uh, that sadhu is became a sadhu by ananya uh, bhakti, in other words, undeviating pure devotion to me. Maya ananya nabhavena bhaktim kuvanta yedvidham, with great determination, practicing. And then what's the evidence? Matkute takta karmanas. For my sake, you will give up any activity that's detrimental to devotional service. And even if, if there are impediments, bhavena uh, bhaktim, and give, even give up the uh, relations to his, to his friends and relatives if they are impediments. And this is what the Bhagavad Gita is going on. This is Arjuna didn't want to, want to kill his friends and relatives. You see? So he has to, for the higher cause of Krishna's order, he eventually agrees to do that. So then what does he do? So, Marashriya Kata this, in, this, in this context, the word Ashriya means concerning. Kata, Kata concerning me. In other words, Krishna Kata. Marashriya Kata Mrishta, which is very sweet and wonderful to hear in chant. Kapila Dev. Marashriya Kata Mrishta, Srinvanti Katayanti. Hearing and chanting. It talks about me. And uh, because of that, the, the natural uh, pains of this world, he doesn't feel so much because the mind is transcendental absorbed, you see. Um, they don't disturb because the, because the mind is gone to me. It's compl- you know. And this was exemplified by Pallad, who was a, who was a, uh, a, 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 a um, sadhu personified. That he wasn't disturbed. His father finally said, take him away and kill him. You know, he's just a poison tree in the dynasty. So he had his horrible henchmen, you know, he tried to poke him. With the, they, the, the swords couldn't poke him, so they threw him off the, 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 the mountain. They tried to crush him under the elephant, poison him, and all that. And he was, not only wasn't he killed, he wasn't even disturbed. He was completely absorbed in, in Krishna. Whatever Krishna wants it will happen, you know, he was protected. Hare Krishna, welcome. Page three twenty-seven. Did we read that one yet? Or we did we did eighteen nineteen? Okay. All right. So just just could, we'll continue a little bit with this. Uh, would you like a get a book? You can sit there. You can sit on a chair. Or you can sit on the bench. Hare Krishna. So um, so the next one is Maitan uh, with the then, then he says to his mother, I forget the Sanskrit, so you should search, search, search out such sadhus and associate with them, sadhu sangha, because there is so, by their association, you will uh, nullify all of the results of your previous bad association. Niyamana moha jita sangha dosha. You'll conquer over all the doshas, the faults that have come from bad association, you see. So then comes the most famous verse in the whole series, and I'll end with this one in, in, as far as that goes. Satam prasangan mamavirya sambido. We're on page uh, 526, Guru. Satam prasangan mamavirya sambido bhavanti ritkan rasaya nakrata tajoshanad ashu apabhargavartmani shraddha ratir bhaktur anukramishiti. This is practically the, 
mission statement for the whole Hare Krishna movement. This is why Prabhupada started this movement. So Satan Prasanga. Now remember, the, f- the first word of the whole series is Prasanga, right? There it means strong attachment. Here Prasanga means sub- uh, substantial association. It means you're not just sitting in the same room with the sadhu, but you're listening, you're hearing with rapt attention. So Satan Prasangan, Mama Virya Sambhido, in association of my devotees, you will hear talks about me, about my glories. This is Kapiladev speaking as Krishna. And which those talks, those sounds, act as life-giving elixir for the spirit, you see? Rasaya nakata. And Tadjoshanat Ashu, pursuing this easiest of, of yoga systems, he says in the next verse, what's easier? You know, you're coming here, I'm trying to just recite, re- repeat words that I've heard. It's not that I'm a great sadhu. But this is yoga. This is yoga. And Krishna approves of it. So, engaging in this process, Ashu quickly, the path of liberation, one develops these three things. Shraddha, uh, one's faith increases. Rati, attraction to Krishna, and Bhakti, which is pure love. The whole process is, is concentrated in there. And the essence of all of the, of the Sadhu Sangha and the hearing and chanting, Harinam Sankirtan. You chant and I hear. I chant and you hear. And we both dance. This is the best process in this age. <laughs> so that's all there. Anyway, it, it goes on a couple more verses, but that's the basic thing. And that's uh, exactly what uh, these classes and the, the process of devotional service probably is meant to do, is to, to develop by the, centering on the process of, of, of chanting the holy name. That's the, uh, the beginning in, of the whole thing and the end of it. But then we, one becomes receptive to these wonderful words that Srila Prabhupada is giving us, which are Krishna's words, you see, but presented in a way, first of all, in the English language that we can understand, but also presented in, in a way that uh, we can absorb and try to uh, establish in our own lives and take them in our own lives. So that's the... This, and I think I'll leave the last verse for tomorrow because we usually have a few poems at the end of our class. So, <laughs> so here's one that... Uh, we haven't heard in a while. This, this, this verse was spoken by Lord Chaitanya to Sanatan Goswami in his teachings in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, in the part that deals with the process of devotional service called Abhideya. He divided it into Sambandha Abhideya Priyoj, and I can't get into that description now, but it, this is the process. And near the beginning, he chants this wonderful verse. He says, Prabhupada would often quote it, Ya kama dinam katina katita palita dhuni deshas. Tesham jata maina karuna natapa no upashanti utri jaitan hati yodopate sampratam sabnabundis tvamayatak shadanam abhyamam ni yung svatmadasi. In how many ways have I sought to obey the seductive demands of my wicked desires? They show me no mercy. Yet on I've gone shamelessly trying to quench lust's unquenchable fires, but now I'm rejecting these hellish desires, for my higher intelligence now has awoken. O Krishna, O shelter of fearlessness, please let me serve you with faith that will never be broken. So this is, we have to come to that realization, that we've been slaves to our own material desires that, we, that, you know, that are, are our enemies because they keep us bound like ropes to this material world, birth, death, old age, and disease. But we can get free of those by purifying our intelligence, by hearing these kind of sounds, by hearing these and, and, and contemplating it. That's why these books are so important. So, uh, any questions or comments? Another poem. Okay. <laughs> so, there's so many, the Sanskrit language is just exquisite. You know, it, 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 it is uniquely uh, suited to express the, the highest sentiments of love of God and describe Krishna. So here's a sample from, uh, about the holy name, which we, if you chant a little bit, you'll, you know, you really some benefit in saying Anyway, so this is by uh, Raghunath Das Goswami. So he says, Radheti nama navasunda dasidu mugdam, Krishneti nama manurabhada gada dugdam, Savakshanam sarabhiraga himena ramyam kritvata daiva pibame rasane chudarte. An excellent fresh nectar drink with endless subtle tastes, such as the name of Radha, by whom all three worlds are graced. This Hare, Hare is Radha, this is the name of Radha. But all three worlds are graced. Condensed milk that is wonderfully delicious, thick and sweet, such as the name of Krishna, 
in whom all attractions meet. Now mix these drinks, O thirsty tongue, and add the cooling, fragrant spice of love, a prize the wise will try to buy at any price. And then in every moment drink this beverage most fine and make my heart supremely blissful, peaceful, and divine. Now these poems are available for free. You just send me an email and I'll send you a PDF. I have poems about Prabhupada, about Lord Chaitanya, eight verses about Lord Nityananda. Oh, friends entrapped in Kali's clutches, yearning to break free, just worship Nityananda Ram, the root of the Bhakti tree. That's the refrain line. So it's all free. Just send it, and here's the, the, the email. You can remember it. Dravida108 at gmail. Can you? D-R-A, like South Indian, Dravida. And then just the number 108 in gmail. And I'll send you all my poems. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hari Hari Bo. Now we can gather over here for the Arctic. You see the beautiful forms of Radha and Giri Hari. And tomorrow we'll finish the chapter. Hari Krishna. You're all invited. And it's Taco Tuesday. You come a little earlier, you can have free tacos out there. <laughs> Do you know about that? You heard. Okay. All right. There you go.